Welcome back to the big board and welcome back to the play by poll of flat top. Holding the camera in my hands at the moment because I can't find my stand. Uh, I think I'm using it to play the magazine game Unconditional Surrender Case Blue. So I'll try and be really brief here. Let's focus on the, this is the 09, end of the 0900 turn. And the two blue blocks with the American flags underneath them represent the uh, estimated last known positions or exact positions of the U.S. Navy fleets that or task forces that you as the Japanese are trying to track. And that Mavis over on the left there near the compass rows is uh, uh, staying in touch with the uh, what ostensibly is task force one. So uh, doing an okay job keeping track. The U.S. knows that there is a task force headed along the coastline there and you know that that's the I think the Shokaku so uh, we do want to get some further confirmation or that the the, the non-player team the US team uh, will be seeking further confirmation of you know that uh, group of ships that task force and that's what those two aircraft that you see on the right there are, uh, are headed to do now further up in the in the distance here these guys, I split out uh, the Japanese. I took four or five destroyers and made a separate task force and left them underneath, uh, underneath this cloud here. And my thinking is that I was hoping I'd be a little bit further away, but uh, I was uh, trying to get the. In fact, you know what? These guys, I haven't moved these guys. These guys go one more hex, I believe. Crunk right up to here. I don't even know if they can go through that little gap, but I'm going to assume they can. Uh, the they're probably going to get spotted by the radar, but crap, I'll have to check that out. All right, maybe they'll go the other way. What I was trying to do was leave a decoy force behind under the cloud to attract the attention of the U.S. forces here for you. Uh, didn't bother to put a pole up to do that uh, because you know. You have a very significant chance of being nailed by the rest of the aircraft that are headed over in this direction. In any case, so it's all it's all going to be uh, on for young and old in a little bit once we uh, once the Americans get a bead on the Shokoku there, they will probably launch an attack on that, and Shokoku is fairly lightly defended. And then over here, you've got your main task forces uh, steaming in with the view that they want to A, stay out of uh, reach of, of these aircraft searching. And these aircraft are going to have to circle back and head back towards, uh, I don't know, New Guinea or wherever it is. They're not New Guinea. Uh, I forget the name of the, the port that they're supposed to head back to. Uh, but in any case, they're headed back that way at some point. Uh, so they're just trying to eke out a, uh, a few more turns of closing over here so that they can try and launch an attack against the task force one. Um, Shukuku probably could do a preemptive attack, but I, I've got to have a, a look at the available forces to see if they can really make a dent and see if it's worthwhile trying to do that or, uh, or husband, husbanding resources for, for the attack that will eventually come. So that's kind of the situation. I will probably put a poll up to ask whether or not these guys should try and attack or whether they should uh, stand down and wait to, to be attacked. And we'll kind of take it from there and I'll give you the information you need to make that decision in terms of uh, uh, the number of aircraft that'll be available and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll work all that out in just a little bit and we'll look forward to you guys uh, seeing what's going on at the end of the 0900 hour heading into the uh, 10 a.m. Uh, time slot on uh, May the... Is it May? Yeah, May the 8th. So there we go. Later.